Hi, I'm Jane at Rock and Worms. Welcome to Castings Crew, and also welcome to you if you're checking us out because you're worm curious. What I'm going to be showing you tonight as I work on this bin is the subtle difference between the ping pong method of horizontal migration, as it's becoming called, and the wedge method of horizontal migration, and how they are different from each other and when I use one method versus the other. So let's get into the bin. The first part in either method is to sift out or, and remove your castings so you have an empty section of your bin. So uh, since I haven't done a sifting video in a while, I thought I'd just do a little refresher on that for you. I have already sifted out, as you can see, quite a bit of the bin. But uh, yeah, so this is my sifters that I use. I use the 1 8 inch mesh on top of the 1 12 inch mesh. These sifters I bought online from a company called Cal Ranch. I have no affiliation with them, with them whatsoever. And I have a link to where you can buy the sifters from them in my community section. And they're about 40% cheaper than the exact same screens on Amazon. So if you want to save some money, buy it from Cal Ranch instead of Amazon. That's all I'm saying. All right. So I've sifted out the bit of castings that was, was left. This is what didn't go through the 1 8 inch screen. And I've got some uh, little shred here uh, talking about Amazon. Amazon uh, claims that all their uh, products are biodegradable, but this is the blue and black tape that is on the prime boxes in particular, and the worms just don't eat it. Um, I've seen this. Many of the other worm keepers have seen this. So despite Amazon's claim, uh, yeah, the worms don't eat it. So I'm just gonna put that over with other pieces of plastic. And here is, well, that looks like a piece of newspaper, so that's okay. All right, so what I do with the, the uh, stuff that didn't go through the 1 8 inch screen, I just put it in a holding bin of overs, and that's gonna go back into the worm bin when I'm doing my, um, you know, adding uh, new bedding and food so the worms can continue to break down that material. This is the material that went through the 1 8th, but not through the 1 12th. As you can see, there are, oh, look at, I don't know if you can see, here's a little, here's a little baby worm, not happy being exposed to the light. He was just flipping around. Let's give him a second. See if he does those gymnastics. Yeah, I just saw him flipping around. He's calming down a little bit, but I'm actually going to gently pick him up and put him in the overs so he doesn't sift through. All right, so this is, um, you know, more chunky material, certainly not fresh bedding. It's already been worked down quite a bit, and this bedding, um, in my mind, is perfectly suitable to put in your casting castings bucket and use for your, any of your plants or gardens or trees or whatever you want to use it for. I will note that there are cocoons in here. Here's a cocoon right here. Um, there's a couple cocoons over here. So if I do put this castings material in my garden directly, I'm also seeding my garden with worms, which to me is, is fine. I, I'm totally on board with that. If I don't want to lose these cocoons, so to speak, I can also put these overs into the holding bin and put it back into the worm bin. And that would give uh, these cocoons a chance to hatch and turn into worms within my worm bin system. So for me, I probably will just put these into the castings bucket and move them out to the garden. But if you want to save the cocoons, you know, just put it back in your worm bin. That's cool too. Now, the last thing I want to show you here, because like I said, I haven't done sifting in a while on video, is this is the castings 
that came through the 1 12th inch screen. You can still see tiny little bits of, uh, you know, unprocessed food material, mainly grass because of my sifted cow manure that I use. And it hasn't been fully processed by the worms, but again, perfectly lovely black moist material to use in seedlings mix or you know to feed plants and the other thing i want to show you if you can get in here a little bit i'll tip this is look how much castings came out of this small section of the worm bin so you don't have to have you know lots and lots of worm bins to get a decent amount of castings that you can use for your, uh, you know, planting endeavors, okay? So beautiful castings. All right, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna set this aside and deal with it later so we can move back to the bin and talk about the different kinds of horizontal migration. Okay, so here's the worm bin. And uh, I put on fresh bedding when I fed them on oh, 14 days ago, two weeks ago. So they have not gotten into the, uh, the newspaper very much. All right. So what I'm going to do now is oops, I'm going to check over here in the feed zone and um, see where we are on the food consumption. Where they are on the food consumption is what I base my determination on of whether I'm going to ping pong or wedge. If I look in the food zone and there's still a lot of food left, then I will ping pong. And how I ping pong is I do what I also call a fluff in place activity, which means in this case, I would just turn over the bedding and the worms on top of each other. So I'm staying on the same end of the bin, but I am aerating it. I am also using this opportunity to look at the worms and see how they are. Now, because there is no food here, I can be a little bit more, uh, I want to say aggressive, but I don't mean aggressive. Um, I would, I'm disturbing more of the area. If I still had a food zone operating, I would do, be doing more of the fluff and aer aeration on the edge of the food zone and not in the middle of the food zone. So I'd leave the food zone untouched, which is where the majority of the worms would be. Okay, I would just fluff on the two sides, all right? But in this case, oh, I, let me back up. So if there's food in here and I'm doing the fluff in place and I'm gonna ping pong it, I would do what I just did, fluff on either side of the food zone. Then I would put fresh bedding down here in the empty end of the bin and, you know, add my, my uh, food, my amendments, but only a little bit of food because obviously I'm doing this because there's a lot of food in the food zone still, but just a little bit, just to start luring down the more adventurous worms to this end of the bin, but leaving the majority on the old food because I want them to consume the old food first so it doesn't, you know, ferment and get nasty. All right, so after I put in fresh bedding down here and a little food to lure them down, I would just close up the bin and let it get back to work. So that's the ping pong method. You keep them on one end of the bin, you do a little aeration and fluffing, you stockpile the other end of the bin with fresh bedding and a little bit of food and let the worms, you know, just work their way down, okay? Now, the wedge method, however, is you have the worms still in the food zone of your bin, the working end of the bin, but when you look at it, all the food is gone, which is indeed the situation I have here. So what I do in this case is I will do the wedge method, which means as I'm aerating the worms, I'm moving them down to the open end of the bin. Now, 
why would I do that is because I am aerating the, the, the bedding, right? And I'm also have a better opportunity to check the worms. I'm checking for their size. I'm checking for their maturity level. This is a breeder right here. You can see the uh, bulgy clitellum. I'm checking to see how many worms I have, and that will help inform how much food I want to put into the food end, especially if I've been pulling breeders out of this bin, because over time, of course, the population decreases, and if the population is less, I don't want to keep putting in the same, you know, big amount of food, because I always want to proportion my food amounts to the amount of worms I have working in the bin. So with the wedge method, I just find it easier for myself to be able to assess what's going on with my bin by moving the worms. And here's some more adults. I need to get back into this bin and, and do some, uh, oh, this one's really nice. Look at this one. This one's a really nice bulgy clitellum. Um, yeah, I need to get in and here and uh, pull some breeders and set up a new breeder bin. Yay! All right. So everybody's been moved down via the wedge method to the non-working end, end of the bin. I've assessed that they're in good, healthy shape. I don't see any issues or problems. Little piece of plastic here I'll pull out when I get the opportunity. And the moisture level is good. I mean, it's it's quite actually quite moist. It's not at a siftable level like the um, material you saw me sift at the beginning of the video. That was nice dry down. You can see the difference between the moisture on this. I mean, I'm I'm just barely squeezing it, and it holds together and you know breaks apart with with some pressure. Okay, so good moisture for the worms, not good for sifting. So when we uh, start drying down this end of the bin, that'll make it easier to sift. Okay, so let's put in a layer of my basic bedding, which is the uh, pre-composted, indoor pre-compost, tabletop pre-compost. I'll, I'll link that down. More and more of you guys are uh, commenting that you're starting the indoor pre-composting, which I think is fantastic. I think uh, you're gonna love it. Your worms are definitely gonna love it. It's going really well for you guys and I'm so happy for you. Um, so that's that. Now I'm gonna take a napkin, put it down as an absorption level as well and start feeding these guys. I'm gonna give them some pumpkin, squash. Actually, I think this is squash. A lot of this is from my own garden. Um, when I don't uh, get to harvest the squash as quickly as I want to, uh, you know, some of the animals, the wild animals get into it and gnaw little holes, and I just take that as a signal to use it for my worms. Nothing gets wasted. All right. I had a decent amount of worms, so I'm going to give them a decent-sized feed. Okay, there's the squash. Next. I'm gonna add in some black eyed peas. Uh, my veg guy had several, several bags of uh, uncooked black eyed peas thrown out. So I, of course, scooped them up. And I did cook these in my Instapot. I did consider just uh, grinding them dry and putting them into the worm bin as a powder, as part of, say, worm chow. But I decided to give cooking these black eyed peas a try and see um, you know, how the worms like them. Now, one of the reasons I'm uh, particularly focused right now on using these black eyed peas is because I did some research and um, my research turned up that black eyed peas and several other bean types plus avocado, this is avocado, um, are very high calorie foods and what I'm doing is looking for alternatives or additions to using worm chow 
as the main mechanism to add calories to the worms to fatten them up. I like using worm chow. In fact, I'm going to add some worm chow right now on top because it also functions as a fast food. And it has good, you know, again, good calories to it. I use grains like, uh, you know, oats and crackers and also food that I use for my other animals on the farm, like the chicken feed. And that gives a really good um, nutritional boost to the worm chow. It's not just, you know, crackers and cereal and stuff. It's a little bit more fortified with the minerals and vitamins. Also, um, again, it's a high calorie. So it does have pretty much a proven, if you will, um, positive effect on sizing up your worms. But I have to pay for worm chow and so I'd rather find alternatives such as fruits and vegetables that will give me hopefully the same fattening result. All right. So if you have access to beans or peas or uh, avocados, and I think bananas are also on that high calorie list, uh, think about using them in addition to your worm chow or as a substitute for your worm chow to size up your worms, okay? All right, okay, that's that. And now I am going to top all of this with some more of the basic bedding. Now as, you know, kind of burying the lead here a little bit, um, I have launched my website finally. And on my website, you will find, um, you know, worms for sale and also worm chow and my vegetable powder, which I think I forgot to put on this, but we'll catch that in another video when I do a, f a feed with the uh, vegetable powder. But I'm at, you know, at Rockin' Worms, hosted by GoDaddy. So it's at rockinworms.godaddysites.com. Okay, but if you just search, search at Rocket Worms, I think it, it comes up as well. All right, and if not, you can always, you know, shoot me a comment or an email down below in the comment section, and I'll link it there as well. And, uh, you know, check it out. I'm looking for feedback because, you know, it is a new site. It is a work in progress. So um, I'd be interested in hearing, you know, any, uh, like I said, feedbacks you have on that. Now, because... The worms are in this end of the bin and I'm looking to migrate them down to the working end of the bin where the fresh bedding and the food is and dry this down so I can sift it. I'm only gonna put the newspaper on half the bin. So some further evaporation and dry down can happen here. Oh, you know what I forgot to do? As I always do, let me just pull it back for a second. I forgot to add in the overs. I do that every time. And uh, so I'm just gonna quickly mix it in, the moisture of the food and the condensation that will happen in this end of the bin because of the frozen foods and the wet foods will uh, moisten that up. In fact, I'm gonna give it a boost by using my new toy, which is this handy dandy sprayer. It's uh, you know like a chemical sprayer from Lowe's, but it's brand new, so it's always, you know, so it's clean. So I'm just gonna wet that up and that'll make that end even more desirable for the worms to move into. Back to the newspaper, back to the plastic, and we're good to go. Gonna put this back on the shelf and I'll check out it in a handful of days to see uh, mainly how this is drying down because I know the worms will take, you know, at least a week to get through that food. So there we are. I hope uh, you got a little bit more information on the ping pong versus the wedge method and when you would use one versus the other, or at least when I use one versus the other. If you have any questions on it, again, let's have that conversation. All right. I hope you have a good rest of your evening. I remain yours in the dirt, Jane.